Welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon and I've got my coffee. In fact, have you ever heard this quote? It says, a yawn is a silent scream for coffee. So if you're yawning, go grab some coffee, except if it's really late at night and you want to go to sleep. Well, today we are back with a very special guest. We enjoyed him so much yesterday. He brought so much meaning to the shofar. And today we are going to talk about another issue that's so close to his heart, and that is the Father's blessing. He talks and shares. He even called me this week and ministered to me. I sat in my car crying for an hour just with the prayer that he prayed over me. It was so simple, but so profound, so precious. And today, if you had an absentee father, a broken relationship with your father, if you had a neglectful father, a father who abandoned you, maybe you don't know your father, and there is just this hole in your soul, an emptiness, a longing to experience God as Abba, as Father. He is going to release a special anointing today that will bless you, will fill you, will quicken the Holy Spirit inside of you. You know, Malachi 4, 6 says that in the end times, which we're in, that God is going to turn the heart of the Father back to the children and the heart of the children back to the Father. And some of us, we have, we're, it's easy for us to love Jesus because we know the price he paid on Calvary. We've accepted him into our heart. And so that kind of comes naturally. Some of us, it's easy to even receive the ministry of the precious Holy Spirit because he lives inside of us. But many times there's a blockage or a hesitancy to really receive the overflowing, lavishing, exquisite, extraordinary love of our Heavenly Father. Today, that is my prayer for you as you enjoy Reverend Minister, Evangelist, Prophet Bill Yant and his ministry. So before we go down to the living room on this come home sanctuary, let's go to this very special message. Hi, this is Jeremy Rosado. This is Reba Watkins. This is Ron Leaf. And I'm Nancy Leaf. I'm Ruth Manju Capri. This is Dr. Robert Watkins and you're watching CTN. And we're glad you are. Thank you for making CTN a part of your day. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you tuned in today. God bless you and thank you for watching Come Home with Jen Mallon. Well, yesterday we had a beautiful program. It was so powerful, so many truths, so many one-liners. Uh, Brother Bill Yant has the best one-liners. His books have them. They are easy to understand, easy to digest, super practical, very prophetic, and you can almost hear uh, the Father saying them to you, our Heavenly Father. And one of his anointings is he releases an earthly father blessing to those who may not have had that in their life, the blessing of that. Those of you who did, praise God for it. Thank God for it. Yes. Those of you that didn't, you are going to be very touched and ministered to today. So thank you for being here again. It's great to be here. How long have you and your wife been married? 44 years. That is beautiful. Yes. Four, four. Yeah. That's a big deal. I think four means deliverance or something. Well, <laughs> <Sure>. double deliverance. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> He's delivered us through everything. Yeah. You've walked yeah. some roads. Yeah. It's a bumpy road to glory. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Tell us some of, tell us a unique story that stands out with, in your marriage, that something that you got delivered from and overcame. Well, one, one week, a few years ago, we both were attacked physically in our bodies. It never happened at the same time. I got to thinking, uh, the devil's not that big. To hit both of us in the same, in, in our bodies the same week, I th got to thinking, I wonder what God's up to to learn from this. And so I never liked a certain scripture in my whole life till recently, count it all joy when you <laughs> fall into many temptations. I always, I didn't want that, I don't like that verse. <laughs> and so, but when I needed it in this crisis, the revelation came, count it all joy when 
You've fallen in many trials and temptations. And I looked at my wife. I got the download now. We're going to throw a party. Well, there you go. We're going to celebrate this thing. If God wants us to have joy in the start to take us through to the end, we're going to go out to our favorite restaurant and eat. We're going to celebrate instead of fasting and mourning. There you go. So got that download. Finally, <laughs> we went out to our favorite restaurant. It's pure and simple in Greencastle, Pennsylvania. That's a free ad there. It's, <laughs> it's organic. We'll live longer. And uh, we just went there and ate and ate. And we got full of uh, joy and glory. And uh, it's just one of those things that we're, we're finding as we pray for one another. That's where the power is yes. in agreement. I mean, the real miracle in any, uh, any marriage and family is when the husband and wife agree. That's right. That's called a miracle. That's right. And it so, is. And so that's when the power is. And a lot of times I've prayed about things and she said, I'm not sure about that. And then she'll pray about things and she's sure and I'm not. Well, when you wait for God's timing, that's when he wants you to move on it. That's good. That is a powerful golden nugget of wisdom right there. Thank you. Being in agreement is a miracle yeah. with your spouse. <laughs> That's why the Lord has us vow at the beginning, you yeah. know, for better, for worse, till death do us part, Amen. sickness and health, because agreement is hard because you're two yeah. unique individuals that come yeah. together. Yeah. No matter how much you love them, yeah. marriage is messy. Yeah. It is challenging. And a lot of times my wife will remind me, uh, we are so different after 44 <laughs> years uh, the other day, I think. We are so different. I said, um, amen. <laughs> but God, every time I go to prayer about it, God says to me, difference is where the power is. Yes. Difference, our differences, if we look to the Lord during these times, that's where the power is. Yes. God loves variety. That's why he made us all different so we could conform each other to the image of Jesus. I believe that's a real purpose he has. Yes, our spouse, our children can keep us on our knees and yeah. keep us humble more oh, than yeah. just about anything. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I love your book and um, your latest uh, book, Some Hear Thunder, I Hear a Roar. And these are beautiful stories that will encourage your heart. You can get it on Amazon. And I thought today we would talk about a few things before sure. you release that earthly yes. father's blessing. Yeah. One of the chapters that really stood out to me, several did, but the, ch the chapter about your favorite flower and yeah. why. So yeah. tell, tell our amazing viewers about that. Well, I discovered my favorite flower is an iris. Beautiful. It's like the glory of God in those sense, uh, you know, Splendor, their flower of splendor and majesty. Well, anyhow, about eight years ago, um, I didn't know it because I love God and I love my ministry so much. But he, he looked down and said, uh, he, didn't, he told me right away, son, I believe you're falling in love with your ministry more than me. Mm. And when, when, he, when he, you know what he does? He comes down, he will hinder our ministry to get us back because mm. he loves us. He has to be first. Anyhow, uh, doors, uh, the uh, phone stopped ringing. I stopped getting invitations to meetings for three months. So what I did is just stayed home with the family, went to church, uh, meditated on the Lord. And we lived in a, a, a home where the bay window had, was full outside of irises. And when I went past him one morning, he said, son, I want you to sit down on the sofa and just behold those flowers. And I just sat down and I, was, I started saying their name out loud, Iris. Iris, Iris, and out came, I rest, Wow! I rest. He said, son, you're going too fast. If you'll slow down and just be with me, you would become everything I created you mm. to be. And I looked at those flowers, not one of them flowers were sweating. <laughs> not one of them looked like they were stressed out, <laughs> unless you don't water them <laughs> like us. But uh, I just saw that, uh, uh, a revelation of the Lord that he, he just wants to slow us down and make sure we're resting in his father's love for us. And those three months, God taught me this. People's not my source. That's right. He's our source. Yeah. He brought in finances for our family without me leaving the house. I, I heard a, a testimony. My mother called me and said, Bill, they just replayed your video out of Pittsburgh Cornerstone TV 
uh, and we were watching it up here. And I said, Mom, I didn't leave the house. <laughs> Another pastor called me and said, Bill, we replayed your tape one morning in our service. We just brought it back. We felt led to hear it again. I never left the house. <laughs> Listen, if you want to find out if it's your ministry or God's ministry, take a break. Yeah. When you take a break and it keeps on going, it's God's ministry. You're right. If it stops, that was yours. You're right. And sometimes we need to just take a break. The world is, the earth will keep on turning. That's, That's just right. what God, it turned before we got here. It's going to turn after we leave or when Jesus comes. But we need to understand the Father's love. That's a beautiful story. I love, I love the shalom you walk in, just that peace you walk in mm -hmm. and it, it just permeates out of you mm -hmm. and you. you just feel that abiding presence of God. Thank you. The story in the chapter called The Mother's Mantle, you tell a mm -hmm. story uh, about a little girl mm -hmm. and in that story you really emphasize how God is caring for us and attending to us. Yes. Can you share that? Yes. Reminds me of my mother's life. Uh, I heard the story, it was true, uh, that a little girl was playing down the neighborhood and her mother was getting concerned because a, a, a storm was brewing and, and things like that. She called the neighbor lady and said, please send my little girl home. It's about to break loose. So her little girl started about two blocks away and the mother was looking out the kitchen window and all of a sudden the storm broke loose, thunder and lightning uh, hitting the ground, the rain, torrential rainfall hitting the ground and a little girl and she noticed something. Every time it lightning, her little girl would just stop and a smile would break out on her face. Two or three more times it would lightning, her little girl would just stop and started to smile. The mother got terrified. She ran out of the house down the street, sidewalk, picked up her little girl in her arms, ran her into the house and she said, honey, how come every time it lightning, you just stood still and started to smile? She said, Mommy, all the way home, God's been taking my picture. <laughs> oh, how All precious. the way home, God's been taking my picture. How many of you could use a nice dose of childlike faith yeah. that in your worst storm, heaven, you know his eyes on the sparrow and at that moment, heaven's candid camera is clicking away on your life. He's seeing you now at that, that moment more than ever before. So I think God wants to show us off to the world that we have something on our worst day that they can never have on their best day without Jesus. That's right. It's beautiful. He's taking our picture. Yes. So, so we have to smile. Yeah. Oh, well, every time I see lightning now, I mm. recall that story wow. and, and to smile. Isn't it amazing how the Lord uses everything in creation yeah. to minister to yeah. us? From the flower, yeah. to the lightning, to the shoes, to the animals. You know, yeah. creatures are our teachers. Nature is yeah. our teacher. Yeah. So many things he uses. When COVID broke out two or three years back, you know, you hear so much negative pe words from people, you, you don't want to hear it. I was out in the yard one day and I saw this bird and I, I asked him the question, <laughs> what do you think about COVID? And it kept right on singing. <laughs> Would give me no answer. Like it was rebuking me for worrying. And God said, listen, that bird preached to you. I want you to keep right on singing through this stuff. That's so good. It's the power of God through wars that comes down and protects us. And I, I never got it, thank God. But the creation teaches us, yes. the beasts of the field will teach you, and the heavens declare the glory of God. They do. We better, we better start looking. God, if, you're, if you want to hear God, He's always speaking, we're not always hearing. Even the ants teach us, yeah. you know, consider the ant. You know, wow. there, there's so much wildlife Amen. mentioned in the word. Amen. And they're here for us. God yes. is always speaking. Yes. There, it is when people say God is silent, no. He's right. always speaking. It's, it is, are we open? Are we yeah. surrendered? Are we paying attention? Yeah. And you clearly are asking the right questions. So from now on, if you talk to a bird, you know that Brother Bill Yaunt has given you permission to talk to animals <laughs> and it's perfectly okay with the Father. Yeah, please talk to the animals so I'm not crazy. <laughs> 
I, I have done many, I've talked to many things, and um, yeah. so I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. One thing you, you talk about is you talk about, and, and many of the prophets right now are talking about turnaround, mm -hmm. and you talk about how God redeems the things that we have said no to, how he, re yeah. how he restores what the canker worm has stolen. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. Okay. Well, I believe when we say no to God, when he wants us to do something, we say no. I believe he interprets that as a yes. And, and he will give us another chance or a third chance. Uh, he won't let us alone. I've learned in my life, God won't let us miss him. Yeah. He's not just a one-time God who speaks one time and forgets it. He'll come back again and again. And uh, many times in my life, uh, just like the shofar, I didn't want to start blowing out, it looked foolish. <laughs> but uh, God just kept dealing with me and uh, he's, He just redeems our no's and, and interprets them as a yes. And, and finally we give in and say, okay, Lord, and you never know how far your yes will take you. Yes. When I picked up that shofar, little did I know it would take me to Israel twice. Free trips just to blow it. Wow. And just, yeah. J did you just, say free? Free. Free uh, trips. F-R-E-E. -E. Just to blow the shofar yeah. because yeah. you obeyed the Lord. And it's taken us to Hawaii on a vacation <laughs> and I blew it at uh, uh, Pearl uh, Harbor oh. on the anniversary. The Globe people gave me permission, authority. So it's, you never know how far when you say yes. God has great things in store. He's not, he's, he's not going to hurt you. That's right. I often say, Bill, that there are miracles on the other side of our obedience. Yes. Yes. So sometimes the enemy really tries to get us in fear and paralyze us so that we don't say yes. Yeah. And life is so much better when yeah. we just obey God. Even with the camera, the first time I was on TV years ago, I said, Lord, I don't, want, I don't like to be on camera. I don't like how I look. He said, uh, son, I could use you more if, if you looked worse. <laughs> and you can't get away from his call. <laughs> So, I love the way God talks to you. Whatever. <laughs> That's so sweet. Just the way He converses he with you. He convinces us to do it. Yeah. You hear Him. You hear Him. I know you pay a price in mm. prayer and just in resting and mm. seeking, being in the Word mm. to hear Him. Amen. He Thank speaks you. to you beautifully. Thank you. Okay, so one other story uh, that was really special is uh, the rusty plow. And it, it stuck out to me because God is calling us, the body, his bride, mm -hmm. the ecclesia right yeah. now to trust him, believe him and prepare for this great harvest of souls, yeah. billion soul harvest yeah. before he comes back for us. And yeah. we'll hear that shofar blow when he does. Yeah. So tell about that. Tell about that chapter in the book. I saw this vision of churches. The altars were filled with intercessors praying for the harvest. But on the other hand, I saw this big rusty plow near that same altar, and it was rusty because it wasn't being used. Mm. And God said, I want, the, I want the plow outside the house. It's time, I know, I believe we've gotten so excited about the harvest, we forgot to plow. Yeah. Unless we plow and plant seed, there's no harvest. The harvest is still happening. We're part of it. And just like I was invited to minister to Amish and Mennonite recently in Lancaster, PA, uh, you know, they know about plowing the land. That's their livelihood. And even as I was ministering there, I felt a little hesitation, like I was plowing a little bit. And uh, I just felt like the Lord was saying, uh, Bill, when you minister and the, it seemed like the plow's running deep and being resisted, the tip of that plow is piercing hearts. Amen. The tip of that plow will pierce hearts if you don't quit plowing and don't give up. Uh, it's not easy to plow, but God's calling on many of us Go to a place you've never been, a uh, plow where the hearts are hard. That's where the plow needs to be. And uh, we, need to, we need to just uh, continue to plow. And, and, and God said this, while you're plowing, you're reaping at the same moment. Right. It's, it's that accelerated with God's anointing. When you plow, you're reaping already. Amos 9.13. Yeah. That's it. Amos 9.13. We, we yeah. are seeing it. We will see it. We can stand on it. Yeah. It's important. Yes. All right, so another chapter, 
that was really good, and we're, I'm, I keep referring to uh, Bill's amazing book, Some Hear Thunder, I Hear a Roar. You can get this on Amazon.com. But many times people feel that they've done something wrong because God's not answering their prayers yeah. in the way they want their prayers to be answered. Mm -hmm. And you call this chapter, I believe, Big Leagues, uh, Big Hits. Yeah. Share about the powerful truths God gave you. I was watching football one day and uh, Steelers have me playing and I'm a Steeler fan <laughs> in their Pittsburgh I was raised. Anyhow, I saw this football player carrying the, running with the football and he went head on with the opposing team player. It like hitting a brick wall. Even the announcers in the stadium, their, their, their voice shook explaining how hard they hit. I said, my goodness. I couldn't get over that big hit. And I said later, hey, hey Lord, I'm, I'm taking some big hits myself. What's going on? <laughs> he said, son, you don't know it, but I put you in the big league. Ooh, yes. It doesn't mean God left you. He put you in the higher level. He's put you in the big league. And some of you have been hard, hit hard so much in life. You, you thought the Lord left you, forgot you. No, you've been promoted to the big leagues when you take a hit like that. And it's not promotion. Uh, God, God didn't uh, forget about you. Again, uh, you're, you've been placed in a big league, so you, you ought to start shouting uh, <laughs> those big hits. I'm in the big league. That's right. Bigger battles help you stand stronger. Yeah. And, but look how he pivoted that yeah. perspective. Instead yeah. of the mentality what did I do? Yeah. He said, no, I've, I've yeah. called you higher. You're going to take harder hits. Well, just like coming here, and I heard you went through it too, warfare. I said, Lord, why can't we minister without <laughs> warfare? You ever think of that? And God said, it's your warfare that prepares you to minister. That's right. It's your warfare. God uses our warfare. warfare. He doesn't waste it. I love that. It grows us. He does. Matures us. Yeah. Makes us more like him. Yeah. We Amen. get to the end of ourself. Amen. Then, it, then it's him. And that's what we want. Amen. Amen. Let's shift into the ministry God's given you to share and release an earthly father's blessing. Okay. When was the first time that happened? Okay, it began in my own personal life with my own dad. My mother affirmed me greatly. You heard of that. I told you earlier. But I never felt affirmed by my earthly dad because many years he was an alcoholic and I never felt like I could please him doing anything. But my dad was 85 and he was ready to die in the hospital. And I went to my father to see him for the, one of the last times. And uh, when I turned from his bedside to go into the hall of the hospital, I heard my dad say these words, bless you, Bill. Aww. Bless you, Bill. And it was like I was waiting my whole life <laughs> to hear those words. And when he said that, I felt something break off of me over my head down to my feet, and it changed me, changed me. And you know, a mother's prayers are powerful, yeah. but nothing on earth can take the place of an earthly dad saying to their kids, hey, I love you, son. I love you, daughter, and I bless you. Nothing takes that place unless God heals that. Yeah. And God's given me a short word to release an earthly father's blessing into people that didn't get it. And I just want to stand in proxy today. I want to say to you, first of all, forgive your earthly father. They know not what they did. They probably missed being affirmed by their earthly dad, so they didn't give it to take, they didn't have it, that love and affirmation to give to you. So forgive them. In their bones, God said, tell the people in the father's bones, they did love them. They couldn't say it or show it. So I want to stand before you by faith in the spirit and stand in proxy of your earthly father. You. I want you to hear these words because you'd never heard them probably before from your dad. I love you. I love you. And I bless you. You were born to shake this world. And there's nothing you cannot do. You're so special. You're my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You're my beloved daughter. Your daddy's favorite little girl in the whole wide world. Nobody can take your place. I bless you coming in. I bless you going out. I bless you in the marketplace, the city, in the field. I bless your wallet and purses that will never know what lack is. 
I bless you to go the distance as far as God takes you. I bless you. And I break that orphan spirit off of you. I cancel that assignment that tells you you don't belong here or there. I break the orphan spirit with an earthly father's blessing. I love you and I bless you and I love you. Thank you, Father. That's so precious. Thank you. Bill, that's so powerful. And many have never heard those words. And right. our words are, are meaningful. Thank you for doing that. Can I say something? Absolutely. I was in the Amish country ministering and a man came up after I released this blessing. He said, Brother Bill, I need to tell you something. I went to my dad's home because he was dying and I wanted my dad to say to me, I bless you, son, and I love you. My dad wouldn't respond to me. But while waiting for his response, I felt the urge. I felt the urge to hug him <laughs> and say, Dad, I love you. Oh. And he left the hospital, never saw Dad alive again until after the funeral, a nurse came to him and said, Hey, by the way, when you left your dad's room that night, I never heard a grown man bawl that loud. I never heard a grown man bawl that loud after you left. Sometimes we need to take the step first. Yes. Reach out because they need it. Yes. I'll never forget that testimony. So many live with regret. Yeah. And you're right. I, I, I really appreciate how you said in their bones, they love you. Yeah. They just didn't know how to tell you. Yeah. And thank you for being that mouthpiece and that voice that that sets the captive free and that just yeah. brings uh, that oil, yeah. that costly oil, that healing balm of Gilead. Yeah. I really believe hearts are being healed. I know you've been touched today. I wish we could do 10 more shows uh, with Reverend Bill Yaunt. We'll have to bring him back. I'm sure he's got more books in him that he's gonna birth, but I do want to tell you that your father loves you and you are precious. I pray today something shifted in you and broke off of you. Thank you for partnering with this ministry. If Come Home has touched you, I encourage you, will you pray for us? Will you partner with us? Will you write in and let us know that this show is meaningful? If it's on your heart, encourage us through your giving to keep going forward in this ministry. God, it was God's idea, it was heaven's idea, and we're just so grateful for the opportunity. Let the Holy Spirit continue to minister to you, continue to receive the Father's love. Come home to Him with your whole heart, your whole soul, all your mind, and all your strength. I'm Jen Mallon. Thank you for being with us today. Come home.